Hello everybody out there watching on YouTube and welcome to the 33rd race of Season 7 of the NNSCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series. I am Levi McIntyre, the voice of the NNSCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series, here to welcome you to the Chevy Revolution 400 here at Richmond International Raceway as we're getting set for 52 laps of racing at our final short track stop for Season 7. And this should be an interesting one considering we have not been to this track since Walmart Cup Series era. And we'll see how this version is, which is the 1990 version of Richmond. We'll see how everything plays out. But a uh, very historic front row, to say the very least. I believe this is the first time we've had a couple start on the front row. Joey Park Hill on the pole with his wife, Melissa Alexander, in second. But let's get the command to fire engines for the Chevy Revolution 400 at Richmond. Drivers, start your engines! And real quick, a look at the rest of the top ten. We got in row two, we have Curtis McIntyre racing teammates next to each other. Matt McIntyre, Jonathan Zorlin. Row three, Carson Gum, Jesse Turner. Row four, Jay Jefferson, Clint Spillman. Then row five, Michael Norman, Dylan Jacobs. So all three of the current championship contenders that are within reach of each other are starting in the top ten. So this is going to be... A very interesting race, not only to determine who's going to win the race, but for the championship as we get down to the wire. Pace car into pit road. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing. Joey Park Hill leads the first lap here at Richmond and actually has nearly a one second lead over second place Matt McIntyre as things got crazy back there and I see Clint Spillman getting the wall and sideways and then more cars collected multi-car accident here at Richmond on lap two to bring the caution out as drivers are trying to slow down and keep from running into one another but Clint Spillman ended up getting turned and hit into as a result of all this craziness of trying to let drivers in line and going three wide off of turn two so already a caution brought out here at Richmond and of course all right there off of turn two going down the back straightaway and I was keeping my eye out up here at the front and I thought it looked like Joey Parkhill would go into pit road, but I guess they're not going to pit just yet. But let's take a look and see what brought the caution out for the first time tonight here at Richmond. Well, here's a look at how this happened. So, Clint Spillman's running three wide in the middle, and as we're coming off of turn two, you can see the 60 car get really loose off the corner, and he's trying to catch his car, and as he tried to catch it, he got down into Jordan Forbes, up into the wall, and then sideways again, right down in front of Johnny Gardner, which sent Spillman for a slide down the back straightaway, and already I could see the engine smoke pouring out of the car as he hit the outside wall, so that destroyed his motor. Then as he continues to slide, he's going to get hit by Ricky Carman right there, so that's how Carman got his damage. And then Caleb Kilburn gets in the Spillman just a little bit, but I don't think it's going to affect Kilburn all that much. But a couple of cars getting damaged with Spillman taking the worst of it after he hit the outside wall. In fact, let's look at that outside wall impact from the helicopter view to see how much it really did him in and yeah it's just tricky that right side of the car it's really really tricky to know 
what kind of damage it did and that there's always one little spot on the right side of the cars if you get hit there or you hit the wall in that spot it just destroys the engine and the inner workings of the car so tough break for Clint Spillman and a tough break for Ricky Carman who ended up getting into the 60 as he was spinning down and across the track but let's go ahead and take you to the restart here at Richmond well, after that first caution, we actually have an additional car out of the race, and that's Charles Sanford, and I don't even remember seeing him getting to anybody in that wreck, but unfortunately um, he's done, along with Clint Spillman, so tough break for them too. But uh, top 20, if I can, do a rundown before we get back to racing. Joey Parkhill's still your leader. Second is Matt McIntyre. Third, Jay Jefferson. Fourth, Dylan Jacobs. Fifth is Michael Norman. Sixth is Carson Gums, 7th Jonathan Zorlin, 8th Jordan Forbes, 9th Melissa Alexander, 10th Jake Rogers, 11th Jesse Turner, 12th Raphael Fireblade, 13th Johnny Gardner, 14th Henry Sanford, 15th Seth Cole, 16th Jessica Sheldon, 17th Cody Lamas, 18th James Qualls, 19th Cole Deaver, 20th Cole Baker. Green flag is back out here at Richmond, and after Park Hill had taken the or had kept the lead at the beginning and got off to a pretty big margin. Looks like we're about to get more of the same as their three wide in turns one and two between the three championship battle, three championship leaders, Dylan Jacobs, who leads the points, Jefferson second in points, Matt McIntyre third in points, and Jacobs going to take second away. And he started in 10th on the outside, which is not where you want to be on this track, and he managed to work his way up and now up to second and now can focus on trying to run down the leader Joey Parkhill who has led every lap so far to get this race underway and a few cars have actually entered pit road after the green flag came out so perhaps some pit strategy for a few drivers and I think they were DJ Curtis, Hen Hannah Klein and Rob Evans who I think saw go into pit road. Meanwhile, as Park Hill leads by a little bit, Dylan Jacobs not only trying to run down the 38, but also trying to keep the 5 of Jay Jefferson in his rearview mirror. Because remember, these two are 1 and 2 in the points respectively. Jacobs leads the points by only 9 over Jefferson, at least coming into the race. And then Matt McIntyre, who's currently scored in 7th, although might drop back to 8th, maybe even 9th. He came into this race 18 points out of the points lead. And keep this in mind, after tonight's race, we only have three races left in the entire season. We got Talladega next, then Lime Rock, and then Kansas. Meanwhile, up here at the front, Dylan Jacobs has caught Joey Parkhill and is going to dive it into the inside. Going into turn one, can he make the pass, though? Or does Joey Parkhill have a strong car on the outside lane, too? Though he's hanging on strong, but I think the momentum from running the bottom is going to give the momentum to Jacobs and take the lead. So Dylan Jacobs, the current points leader in the Marvel Studios Cup Series, now takes the race lead over. And Dylan Jacobs, this season, his statistics have been pretty solid. Two wins, six top fives, tied for the most top tens with 13, and currently best average finish of 15.7. Looking to extend on his great season. Remember, he was the season five champion. Last season was a season he'd like to forget as he struggled massively. And this season, he started off the season kind of as a repeat of season six. But then something switched on and he just has been consistent about every race since about All-Star break. And he's currently leading the points on his way to try and get a second championship and be the first driver in Marvel Studios Cup Series history to win two championships. Meanwhile, Jacob's under fire from Dylan J or, uh, from Joey Parkhill as Parkhill's actually coming back. And now he's to the bottom to try and take the lead back. And Jay Jefferson is loving this as this puts him into the picture to battle it out for the lead. We're seeing some really good racing up here for the lead between 
two championship contenders and a driver who's just trying to end his season on a high note as Joey Parkhill actually comes into this race seventh in the point standing so he's had a very good upswing since the second half of the season began and he's looking for win number two this season and I believe fourth or third overall to my knowledge and he's still there to Dylan Jacobs but just hasn't been able to make the pass And meanwhile, as this is all happening, there's a sneaker coming into the picture, and that's Michael Norman in fourth, who slowly, although he lost a little bit of time on that previous lap, he's pretty much right there to perhaps close in on the top three and make it a four-car battle for the race lead. And then behind Michael Norman is our winner from last week at Ontario, Jesse Turner, who's currently in the fifth position. And remember, Jesse Turner, around the mid-portion of the season, he was seen as a favorite to win the championship based on his level of consistency. And then around the time we got to the two-thirds mark of the season, he had really faltered in a bad way in the point standings. But after his win at Ontario, he moved up from 12th to 8th in the point standings. So this is the first time he's been in the top 10 in points since, if I'm going to take a guess at what was the last race he was top 10 in points in, I want to say either Toronto, Darlington, or Sawmill, actually, now that I think about it. But now even Jesse Turner is under fire from Jonathan Zorling, but back up at the front, the battle for the lead continues. Joey Parkhill took the spot, but Jay Jefferson going to get it himself. And Michael Norman has caught these three, so it's a four-car free-for-all for the race lead, but Park Hill led at the line by using the momentum on the outside line. And actually, even though these two are battling it out, Jonathan Zorlin and Jesse Turner are actually closing in on the top four, so the battle for the lead could get even more intense if they can catch up. Now keep this in mind with pit frequency set to 3x, and it's a 52 lap event. If these drivers that have yet to come to pit road this whole race, if they can make it past lap 26 without pitting, then they'll only have a one stop, one pit stop to have to deal with. Jay Jefferson, who's currently leading, his statistics are very similar to Dylan Jacobs in terms of, of uh, well, of stats, even though he has more wins than Jacobs. In fact, he's got four wins, tied for the most top fives with nine. The other one that has nine top fives is Joshua Sakuli, and then tied for the most top tens at 13 with the points leader, Dylan Jacobs, and an average finish so far of 16.1, so not as consistent as Dylan Jacobs, but he's definitely been the winningest most driver so far this season, and he's looking to get his fifth win in season seven and break the record for most wins in a single season currently he ties that record with a few drivers with a couple of drivers even though i can't remember who the rest of the drivers that have gotten four wins in a single season are off the top of my head but since these leaders and all the drivers that haven't pitted yet that made it past halfway without pitting they only have to make one pit stop and they'll be good to go on gas Jay Jefferson may have the lead for now, but whoa, Jacobs kind of put his bumper down there and almost got into the five. Almost a bump and run, so to speak, to try and get the lead for himself. And then Joey Parkhill hanging out right behind him. So too is Michael Norman. Jesse Turner is up here. And actually, Jonathan Zorlin has been losing a lot of ground to the top five. But the top five that are up here are the ones that might be the most likely to battle it out for the win itself. As, we're, as this battle up here at the front between these five has just been incredible. Probably some of the best short track racing I have seen in quite some time on this channel. Jay Jefferson hanging on by a slim thread over to 78. And then the 78 trying to hold off three, maybe even four other drivers to keep a spot for himself. And Zorlane actually closed in quite a good bit that previous lap but now Dylan Jacobs back to the inside and takes the lead back 
from Jay Jefferson. And Joey Parkhill kind of helped them get up there as now Parkhill is underneath of Jefferson to try and get up to second. A lot of drivers trying to go for either their trying to go for either their third win, fifth win, second win, fourth win, first win or first win of the season or Michael Norman. No, Michael has won a race, so he'd be trying to get his second win this season. Zorlin trying to get his first of the season. Jefferson trying to go for his fifth. Turner trying to go for his fourth. Park Hill for his second. Jacobs for his third. And right now, Dylan Jacobs has the lead and actually is beginning to pull away a little bit from Joey Park Hill. Last time by, it was a little over a half a second. Although, he's coming into pit road, but none of the other leaders decide to come in with him. So, Jacob's kind of playing a little strategy of his own and handed the lead back to Joey Parkhill for the time being. And then, I would, sus I would expect these drivers running up here towards the front to come into pit road right about now. And, depending on who has a faster stop, we'll see what happens. Parkhill actually going to stay out. Majority of the drivers up in the top 10 decide to stay out. Jacobs was the only one to come into pit road. Although the caution is out, I think that's why nobody came into pit road that time. And Cole Baker has damage, so it looks like it involved him. Even Caleb Kilburn, I think, was involved. And Dylan Jacobs, I don't know if this is going to work out for him. If he's still on the lead lap, he might be able to get to the race lead as a result and well he is going past the pace car so I think yeah I think he managed to stay on the lead lap so he might be able to keep the race lead possibly I don't know it's going to be interesting as the leaders have decided to come into pit road we're going to stay on the uh pit lane camera to see who's going to come out first out of everybody that has decided to come to pit road now. And it looks like Jonathan Zorlin gets out ahead. Joey Parkhill having a longer stay in pit road. Jay Jefferson made some contact. Man, Parkhill is actually in both he and Jesse Turner kind of got the short end of the stick on pit road, so... This is going to really shake up the running order as a result of all this craziness. But let's go ahead and take you to the restart, or not the restart, but the replay of what brought the caution out for the, first, or the second time tonight here at Richmond. Well, we are having an interesting development. After the caution come, came out and all the pit stops had happened, and turns out the caution was for a phantom caution... So nothing happened. NNS area officials just threw the caution out for whatever reason. And now we got a lot of drivers that are starting to retire out of the race, either due to wrecking on pit road or running out of gas, or even for Kyle Matthews' case, being disqualified. So the running order has definitely shaken up a big in a big way. And now they're going to have to go back under caution because there are some drivers that have run out of gas that are still on track like Zachary Fitzwater he's out of fuel and is slowly backing up at least until now he's teleported to pit road James Shelley I believe he did make it to pit road in fact he's trying to get in but Raphael Fireblade is out of fuel but anyways at least until we get a word from NNSRA officials if we're gonna get back to racing this time by or next time by but Running order currently as it stands, Jonathan Zorlin is your leader. Second is Carson Gum. Third, Jay Jefferson. Fourth, Dylan Jacobs. Fifth, Michael Norman. Sixth is Jake Rogers. Seventh, Jessica Sheldon. Eighth, Jesse Turner. Ninth, Cody Lamas. Tenth, Seth Cole. Eleventh, Dylan Young. Twelfth, Joey Parkhill. Thirteenth, Matt McIntyre. Fourteenth, James Qualls. Fifteenth, Cole Deaver. Sixteenth, Johnny Gardner. Seventeenth, Benjamin Miles. 18th, Cole Baker. 19th, Melissa Alexander. 20th, Chris Dollarton. And we are going back to racing here at Richmond. Jonathan Zorling got out of the pits first out of his group, but now under fire from Carson Gum and Dylan Jacobs as Jacobs pitted before the caution came out, and now he might make it three wide for the lead 
huge dive bomb in the turn three for Dylan Jacobs to try and get the lead back. And he's going to lead this lap, and the caution is out again. But I don't think it was for a crash. I think it was because another car ran out of fuel and couldn't get back to pit road. It might have been Raphael Fireblade, and that's why the caution is out. And Dylan Jacobs took the lead just in time. So, since we pretty much know what brought the caution out, it was because the 52 was not quite into pit road. Although there's some damage on a few cars I didn't even notice, like Rafael Leduc and Ryan Acosta, for example. I don't know if it was just because they were making contact while trying to get on the pit road, or, or, on, or while they were in pit road. I don't know, it's really, really bizarre, but beside the point, Dylan Jacobs currently leads the way. We're just going to go ahead and take, uh, take you to the restart here at Richmond. All right, so we're gonna be going back to racing with six laps to go. Dylan Jacobs is the race leader, second Carson Gum, third Jay Jefferson, fourth Jonathan Zorlin, fifth is Jessica Shelton, Se uh, sixth is Michael Norman, seventh Jake Rogers, eighth Jesse Turner, ninth Cody Lamas, tenth Dylan Young, eleventh Joey Parkhill, twelfth Seth Cole, thirteenth James Qualls, fourteenth Cole Deaver, 15th, Matt McIntyre, 16th, Benjamin Miles, 17th, Johnny Gardner, 18th, Cole Baker, 19th, Melissa Alexander, 20th, Chris Dollarton. And then the final two cars on the lead lap are Alyssa Drayson and Ryan Acosta. And all the other drivers still on track are a lap or two down. And the first one of that is Caleb Kilburn, who's third in line up here towards the front. Green flag is back out. Final six laps. Hopefully we can finish under green. And Dylan Jacobs, very happy to see that Caleb Kilburn actually is going to pass Carson Gums, so that way it puts an extra car in between himself and second place. But Jacobs is hoping that Kilburn doesn't actually try and race him and hopes that he can come away with his third win of the season. Meanwhile, the from first and second starting to spread out a little bit. As Joe, uh, Jay Jefferson actually getting attacked by a few drivers for position number four. Michael Norman trying to go to the inside and is going to take the position. Less than four to go here at Richmond. And pretty much I think if a caution were to come out now, the race would end under caution. Because there'd be no way we'd be able to get back to racing in time. And all Dylan Jacobs has to do is just not is just kind of keep Caleb Kilburn behind him, or at the very least, just continue to run what he's running, and he is going to get this win. Although, just as I say that, here comes Kilburn, but luckily for Jacobs, his lead is now to over a little over two seconds, and even the battle for second is going on as Jonathan Zorlin trying to take the position from Carson Gum. So you got two different side-by-side -side instances up here at the front, but Jacobs, with the more cleaner car, is going to get around the 99 and keep the spot, and actually crew the lead even though he was on the outside. Less than two to go here at Richmond. Dylan Jacobs in the three coming off of four to take the white flag. White flag is out in the Chevy Revolution 400. Race will be official regardless of what happens. And Jacobs has nearly a four second lead as a result of all of this. Going in the three for the final time and I think he could just coast it from here if he really wanted to. Checkered flag getting ready to wave. Dylan Jacobs wins the Chevy Revolution 400 at Richmond. Probably the toughest w race that Jacobs has had the fight to win for. Cause it, and early on he had to battle it out with five other drivers to try and get up to the front. And then for him he caught a lucky break by pitting before a caution came out. Then just made a huge bonsai three wide move to take the lead and held on to it till the end. And wins by nearly five seconds. Great job for that 78 team and is going to extend on his points lead just a little bit as 
Meanwhile, ooh, Jonathan Zorling got some major damage. I don't know if he got into the pit wall after the race or what. But anyways, Carson Gum with a great performance in the second position. The closest he's come to winning a race this season by far. Jonathan Zorling, despite seeing what his car looks like now, still phenomenal third place finish. Great run for Michael Norman finishing in fourth. And then Jay Jefferson, despite losing a few points, still going to come away with a top five in fifth and will stay within reach of Dylan Jacobs in the points lead. Jesse Turner following up that win at Ontario with a sixth place position. Dylan Young with a solid run in seventh. Cole Deaver continuing his momentum in eighth. Cody Lama's solid run in ninth. And then Benjamin Miles, I think this is the first top ten he has had in quite a while. Then there's your top 20, your top 30. And then we had a lot of drivers out of the race, but the bottom five for this week were Julia Katrine, Kyle Matthews, Ricky Carman, Charles Sanford, and Clint Spillman. But I'm still curious as to about how Kyle Matthews got disqualified from the race. But regardless, as you're watching Dylan Jacobs do his victory burnout, we got three races left this season to crown a champion. We got Talladega next, then Lime Rock, then Kansas. But until we get to Talladega, here are your results, rookie points and regular points heading into Talladega. And this is Levi McIntyre signing off.